There's a reason why rappers like A Tribe Called Quest have long said things in their songs like, Industry rule number 4080, record company people are shady. Every entertainment shark is darting directly towards the biggest meal possible, and unfortunately, that financial nourishment is the artist that they sign. With the modern day 360 deal, entitling record labels to a chunk of everything a rapper or singer creatively monetizes, the legacy of screwing rappers over is a deal some artists aren't even aware of. Take Blueface for example. He is managed by the game's manager WAC100, and his record label is Cash Money West, ran by Birdman from Cash Money and WAC100. But that is about all of the fine print that he read. When asked about his recording contract during an interview with The Breakfast Club, Blueface shrugged it off and stated, All I know is Cash Money West and WAC100. You gotta ask WAC about the other people involved. Although the rapper Lil Yachty wasn't quite clear on the definition of a 360 deal, he at least knew what his contract consisted of. Taking a Twitter to say, y'all gotta understand just because I didn't know the term name 360 deal doesn't mean I don't know what kind of deal I have. I only wasn't aware of the term 360 deal. I own all my publishing and I've recouped my deal. For those so pressed, chill, I'm good. With Blueface and Lil Yachty appearing content with their record deals, there is still a long list of rappers that seem to be sick to their stomach with the companies they signed up with. Remember the time when Lil Uzi graduated from his SoundCloud generation and was enrolled in the 2016 XXL Freshman Class magazine cover, along with other sizable names like Dave East, Anderson Pac, 21 Savage, and Kodak Black? When he signed his record deal a year prior in 2015 with Generation Now, the DJ Drama and Don Cannon controlled record label that they ran through Atlantic Records, you would assume Lil Uzi would be excited. But this union was historically led to complaints year after year from Uzi and publicly expressed discontent from the Philadelphia rapper. Even to the extent that Lil Uzi claimed to be signed to Wiz Khalifa's Taylor Gang in 2016, an announcement that DJ Drama promptly shut down as false. There were those mixtapes Love Is Rage, Lil Uzi Vert vs. The World, and The Perfect Love Tape that Uzi launched from Generation Now that lifted him up the elevator of accelerated stardom and streaming numbers. Uzi's debut album was supposed to drop on November 2016, but label tension seemed to be involved when the project wasn't released until August 2017. There were all sorts of conflicting views on the delay. Lil Uzi Vert blamed DJ Drama by referring to him as an old person who doesn't understand what's going on right now. Don Cannon told a fader four months prior to the actual release that the album wasn't ready, and Atlantic Records executive Michael Kaiser seemed to believe that Lil Uzi Vert was a victim of his own hype. Even with the certified platinum success of Love Is Rage 2, Uzi's unbalanced life on his record label continued to bubble up to the surface in the media. Uzi beef with Rich the Kid for apparently trying to sign him for a meager $20,000. Uzi also took to Twitter advising recording artists by saying this, and if y'all do sign, sign to a major, don't sign to a rapper or a DJ. It's just easier when the time comes for that fake <laughs> After musically going silent and threatening to retire while only 24 years of age, Lil Uzi Vert, who is now represented by Jay-Z's Rock Nation for Management, broke out with his first song in 2019 on March 28th, controversially called Free Uzi. Oddly enough, that wasn't released through Generation Now, but simply on SoundCloud and Tidal, another Jay-Z connection. But just because there is no Atlantic Records or Generation Now affiliation advertised with the song release doesn't mean that the rapper and label situation have parted ways amicably with each other. It also doesn't mean that Lil Uzi's Vert's record label woes are an isolated occurrence in the music industry. There is an unfortunate list of rappers being outraged by their record label commitments and having full-on fallouts. Veteran hip-hop trio De La Soul blasted an unfair share they were initially offered by their label Tommy Boy when it was announced that their catalog was going digital for streaming. De La's Instagram report read as this. Dear fans, the music will be released digitally. After 30 long years of good music and paying their debt to hip hop, De La Soul unfortunately will not taste the fruit of their labor. Your purchases will roughly go 90% to Tommy Boy, 10% to De La. Thank you. Sincerely yours. Hashtag the Phantom $2 million debt. After interviews on mass platforms like The Breakfast Club and public support from Jay-Z and Questlove from The Roots, De La's dollar divvying dilemma made enough of an impact that Tommy Boy held back on moving forward on the streaming situation until further notice.
Before Pusha T was the president of Kanye West, good music label, and a respected spitter who had an incredible gladiator bout a battle with rap star Drake in 2018, Push was 50% of the critically acclaimed duo The Clips with his brother Malice, who now goes by the more God-driven moniker of No Malice. Their beef with record label Jive went a little something like this. The Clips were recording their sophomore album, Hell Hath No Fury, towards the end of 2003 when a merger between their original label Arista Records and Jive Records occurred. Album delays began to happen, and Pusha T and No Malice issued a lawsuit against Jive, suing to earn the right to run as far away from the record deal as possible. They kept fans fed with a slew of mixtapes, and the severed ties with Jive wasn't granted until early 2007. 50 Cent wasn't always a TV mogul and savvy multi-million dollar flipping business investor. He was also a super successful rapper with record label gripes of his own. On March 2014, 50 Cent announced that he would be parting ways with Shady Aftermath Interscope after 12 years on the label. 50 had expressed being unhappy with Interscope and its boss Jimmy Iovine for many years. 50's SMS Audio Company and his home label's headphone company Beats Audio, ran by Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre, had a huge conflict of interest problem, with Interscope allegedly trying to block 50 Cent from using SMS Audio products for product placement. 50 Cent addressed the problem lyrically on the G-Unit song Changes with lines like, All I hear is Jimmy want my to flop. Dre don't care if I blow. God damn, all this from selling headphones. In 2014, after one album and several highly publicized legal issues, Chief Keef went on Twitter to announce that Interscope had dropped them. In spite of the fact checking done by media figure Miss Info, who stated, even though Keef had been tweeting that he's off Interscope and splitting up with Jimmy Iovine, reality check, Chief Keef is, as of now, still signed to Interscope. Even Chief Keef's longtime producer, Young Chop, seemed confused by Keef's declaration and tweeted, on some real stuff, this is so awkward to me. I was on the phone with Interscope the day before he even said that on Twitter. I'm like, they didn't give me that reaction on the phone. I didn't know what was going on. It is what it is. If he got dropped, it's better for him. Kid Cudi was less than enthusiastic at the support he received from his record label Universal on his album Wizard, venting with an intense Twitter rant. Oh, just a heads up, my weak ass label only shipped 55,000 physicals because they treated this like some indie side project tax write off. So I apologize on behalf of my weak ass major label and I apologize for the lack of promo. Again, my weak ass major label. They try to rush me through this so I can give them another Man on the Moon. But guess what? F that. Next album is Wizard. Man on the Moon 3, on hold till 2014, he wrote. Who mad? Not me and that dot the genius. How exactly did Cash Money's business music cash multiplier Lil Wayne go from calling the Cash Money Records co-founder Birdman my daddy to suing him for a hefty $51 million? Lil Wayne felt like the label was refusing to release his Carter 5 project and violating the terms of his contract. Wayne was not only ready to bounce off as a soloist, but he was ready to take his superstar Young Money roster of Drake and Nicki Minaj with him. It got super ugly with Lil Wayne dissing Baby in songs, during concerts, and in indictment claims that Birdman and rapper Young Thug conspired to kill Lil Wayne during a tour bus shooting that Lil Wayne experienced in Atlanta as he left the compound nightclub. Many attributed the incident to the beef between Wheezy, Birdman, and his new protege, Young Thug. Thankfully, no one was injured or killed in a shooting at Wayne's tour bus, but Young Thug affiliate Pee Wee Roscoe was arrested in connection with the shooting and sentenced to 10 years in prison, followed by 10 years of probation after pleading guilty to 6 of the 27 counts. Even though apparently Roscoe's claimed that Young Thug and Birdman were behind the gunplay against Lil Wayne, the two weren't formally charged with any crime. Lil Wayne's label issues intensified, with the rapper suing the Universal Music Group for $40 million, seeking to reclaim profits made from Young Money artists Drake, Nicki Minaj, and Tyga. On September 18, 2016, Lil Wayne was reported to have accused Birdman of thieving half of the $100 million advance UMG had initially given to Young Money to use towards royalties, marketing, and recording expenses. With their friendship turning on and off over the years, with the potential reconciliation looking possible one day and impossible the next, we're just happy they were finally able to put their differences aside and reconnect. During Rich Homie Kwan's 2015 run, he filed a $2 million lawsuit against his record label, think it's a game entertainment, accusing the company of screwing his bank account out of music royalties for several albums and big hits like Type Away and Flex. 
Quan also accused Think It's a Game Entertainment CEO of using money that was owed to him to buy a home in Atlanta and pocketing over $550,000 from a distribution deal the rapper signed with Def Jam. He also said he had to cut ties with the label and the CEO, but demanded the $2 million in damages. Is there a bright side to the artists and the record labels that traditionally screw them over? New Jersey rapper Russ has a 50-50 partnership with Columbia Records. SZA managed to get an awesome 70-30 split with RCA Records in her favor, and 21 Savage owns 100% of his masters to his songs, and Frank Ocean seemingly finessed 20 million from the Universal Music Group. The moral of the immoral story of artist exploitation is to know your worth and not settle for anything less. This was a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date on everything we got going on by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness and join the movement.